In this video, I'm going to start balancing the mix, specifically the drums. But before I get into that, I want to talk a bit about arrangement. In many cases, a song's arrangement will have a much larger impact on how the mix ends up sounding than the affect of the mixing process. And while one might presume that having a lot of tracks will always provide for a better sounding mix, that's only true if the tracks are well recorded with the overall arrangement in mind. For example, the goal of many jazz trio records is to sound honest, as though you're at the show watching the musicians play live. As such, a few well-placed mics will achieve the desired sound. Professional pop and rock mixes, on the other hand, are often heavily layered and produced to sound larger than life. But how they're layered is carefully considered. The instruments need to blend to create an overall sound, as opposed to fighting with each other for the same space. This is achieved by first choosing the right instrumentation and then balancing them by setting the levels, pan positions, and if necessary, equalization. After that, effects like compression, reverb, delay, and special effects can be considered. But first, it's paramount to get the mix sounding as good as possible without reliance on any plugins or EQ. Make it your goal to create a radio ready sounding mix without using any effects. All that said, I think Scott did an incredible job of producing this song, meaning the arrangement is very well put together and the instruments are recorded very nicely. And as such, it makes perfect demo material to use for learning how to mix. The first thing I like to do is listen to a bit of the song with all the faders at zero just to get an idea of what I'm working with. And I'm also going to listen to the groups individually to get an idea of what they sound like. Before I activate playback, I'm going to drop the master fader down to negative 12 to prevent the output from clipping. In listening to this playback, I hear that there are a lot of layers going on at the same time, and they all add different textures to the mix. Specifically, I noticed how the keys, strings, guitars, and backing vocals are all providing harmonic support for the lead vocal. It will definitely require careful balancing and stereo field placement. It's important to understand that there's no one way to build a mix. Some famous producers like to start from unity and then tear down. Others like to start with the vocals and build it from there and others yet prefer to build it from the foundation up, meaning starting with the drums or the bass and adding on from there. This is the method I prefer, so I'll start by soloing the drum group. And then I'm going to do the same thing from within the drum group. That is, I'm going to start by building it from the kick drum and adding in the pieces from left to right. It's worth noting that the order of the drum tracks here is pretty standard. If they were in a different order, I'd reorder them to reflect this layout. Since I'm starting with the kick drum, I'm going to select the rest of the drum tracks and drag them all the way down. There are three kick tracks. The kick mic is placed inside of the bass drum. Kick external is the mic placed outside of the front head of the bass drum. And kick sub is a specialty mic used to capture the sub bass frequencies of the bass drum. The first thing I'm going to do is blend these three mics together. The kick channel will be used for the punch, the kick external channel will be used for the body of the sound, and the kick sub channel will be used to supplement the low end. Important note, the three primary tracks that need to cut through the mix are the bass drum, snare drum, and lead vocal. As such, I'm going to balance the bass drum tracks for a punchy but full sound that will cut through the mix. 
And before I start, it's worth noting, I think it's important to mix using both speakers and headphones, specifically ones that are neutral sounding and purposed for mixing. Between the two, I generally give slight deference to the speakers. I ended up primarily using the kick channel for the bass drum sound as it's what provided the most punch. I balanced in the kick external channel a bit lower to make the bass drum sound fuller and roomier, and the kick sub lower yet to add in some low and fullness. Next, I'm going to submix the snare drum. There are three snare tracks. Snare top is a mic placed on the top head of the snare drum and where most of the body of the drum sound comes from. Snare bottom captures the higher frequency interaction of the snares against the bottom head. And snare effects sounds like a compressed top head. Because the snare is one of the three essential tracks, I'm going to balance the three individual snare tracks so it sounds powerful and full. I'm going to work with the snare track soloed and then add in the bass drum to balance the two. Throughout this process, I'll be using the quick link function in the mix console to adjust multiple channels at once, preserving their relationship with each other. I could also do this using VCA faders, but I usually find that unnecessary. I relied on the snare top track for a majority of the sound since it's where most of the attack is. I mixed down the snare bottom as it can make the snare sound overly bright, and I added in the snare effects track almost equal to the snare top channel to add in resonance. Without resonance, a snare can easily disappear in a full mix. I kept the panning for both the bass drum and the snare drum in the center as that's where I want them in the mix. Next, I'm going to skip over the hi-hat and work with the toms to balance them in with the bass drum and snare drum. Since the toms only make a few appearances in the song, I'm going to select one of those sections and loop it. Also, I'm going to pan the toms to spread them out in the stereo field. I prefer to pan drums using the drummer perspective, meaning the high tom is on the left and the low tom is on the right. The toms sounded balanced to me within themselves. In perspective of the bass drum and snare drum, I mix them a bit louder than it sounds they should be, knowing that because of their lower frequency range, they tend to disappear pretty quickly when other tracks like bass guitar and guitars are added in. If they end up being too loud, I can always bring them down later. Next, I'm going to balance in the hi-hat and various overhead channels. The overhead channel is a general balance of the entire kit.
The overhead crash channels are solos of just the crash cymbals. And overhead ride is a capture of just the ride cymbal. I'll pan the hi-hat to the left since I'm using the drummer perspective. And all the overhead channels are stereo tracks, so they already properly represent the stereo field and don't require any panning. I mixed the hi-hat down quite a bit, but kept the overhead tracks right about where they were in relation to each other. Now I'm going to add in the ambience channels. These channels are room mics that will add in natural ambience to make the drums sound bigger and wider. The ambient channels include both mono and stereo mics. I'm going to keep them all pan center. As with the toms, I find the ambience can disappear pretty quickly in a mix, so I'm going to mix these channels a bit louder than it seems they should be. If they end up being too loud, I can always bring their levels down later. All in all, I mix these channels down quite a bit as too much ambience can make a mix sound mushy and take away all the punch. At this point, I have all the drums balanced within themselves. Now, for gain staging purposes, I'm going to make it so the peak level is at negative six. I only work with a small section of the song, so I'm going to lower all the levels a small amount more than I should according to the displayed peak levels. To do this, I'm going to select all the drum tracks, activate Quick Link, and then lower the levels. This preserves the balance I just established between all the drum tracks. Also, in looking at the drum group channel, the levels are well beyond negative six, so I'm going to use the prefader gain to lower it by seven decibels. Actually, I'm going to apply the same reduction to all the group channels. Now, with all these levels lowered, I can restore the stereo output to zero. In the next video, I'm going to continue balancing the mix.